beat up by the you know the the screeners in an airport that doesn't that's not a strategy to respond to that your strategy has to be step back look at the society analyze the crisis and say what's the one point where an attack with limited forces would win transform all the right, entire let, thing right, let me stop you there i want to hear your one point but I, I i get you on and respect you and are nice to you but I've been able by myself, I know Obama says I didn't build anything, to build up quite an organization with focus, pick on the right people and hard work, alternative media out of nowhere to reach millions a day. Webster, the, the TSA groping our sons and daughters and wives and husbands has been a unifier. The globalists meant it to be something that broke our backs to train us to accept any form of degradation hum and humiliation. It has been a unifying factor to bring people together. Uh, other things have been a unifying factor. So where's the result? Where's the mass movement with a program and the self-conscious urge to take power? Look, you can see it. I'm sure you could see it with the leftists, right? Once you get into Zuccotti Park, the anarchists are there. They say, oh, we got to fight the cops. Let's fight the cops. Well, that's the controllers manipulating them. It's pointless. It, but the other one, the, the right wing version is just as pointless. In other words, if that's all you're doing, right, if you're, you're you know, inveying, you know, abolish the, the TSA, you're spinning your wheels. It doesn't lead to anything. It's pointless. Well, Webster, Webster. It's a blind alley. Webster, look, Take total, power. Edu total education, total information. That's what's going to give people the tools to decide and what they think right. I cover power. the waterfront. I cover the waterfront. But here's the deal. I see Warren Buffett on ABC News every weekend promoting taxes, taxes, taxes. I see the oligarchs promoting taxes so they can get corporate welfare. So how do you reach out to libertarians and conservatives and explain that the globalists have made themselves exempt from their own laws to pick winners and losers? I, you have to talk to, to these right-wing libertarians in the same way you talk to a left-wing anarchist who's been duped by uh, ad busters and Graeber. You've got, to, you've got to change your ways. In other words, you're on a path to defeat. It's not working. None of this stuff is going to be decisive. Decisive is, I mean, if you want to pick, you want to boil it down to one demand, it's probably something. At the present time, it's probably <laughs> no cuts or in anything paid for by a Wall Street sales tax of 1% on all Wall Street turnover. In other words, tax Wall Street, make the bankers pay. So it's a fighting class-based slogan. Otherwise, you're, you know, you're going to be protesting as, as the society collapses. There are a million things to protest, right? But you got to see what's the root cause. It's being caused by the depression. Depression leads to dictatorship. Dictatorship leads to, to world war. And the German experience was, it's, there's no point in telling people Hitler is bad, wrote a guy, as long as the unemployment is so high and the deflation is so bad, he's gaining, right? So you got you to learn the lesson, right? Learn something. From, I got from it. What Hitler had a program German. other people didn't. So let me. Let me... That, uh, no, it's, uh, until you could solve the problem of unemployment, the Nazis were going to gain. So it's the same thing we have today. As long as there's a depression like this, the institutions are crumbling. What the society is looking for is they want to see a force, a political agency, a power that can say, I have the answers and I want to take but power. But Webster, and I the do public it. is under scientific manipulation by television. The average person is in a you're dream state. You're counteracting it. You're counteracting it, right? So you got to say to people, look, the, enough, the, the TSA, I think you've covered the TSA. How about covering some labor struggle, right? How about those guys who were up in, in Wisconsin, right, fighting the fascist governor? There are fascist governors. The, the biggest tin pot dictator we have is Governor Snyder of Michigan. He's a fascist. He wants to send dictators to control cities, right? Benton Harbor, Flint, and all these places, right, the Detroit school system. And he, he does it. He's a, he's a Republican thug, and he, he imposes uh, austerity, and also he uses it to loot it for his rich friends. So there's a... No, I understand. It's always austerity for everybody with the fat populism. cats. populism. So, so even... Populism. It, populism means you're fighting the ruling class because you want to do something for working people, not to them, not strip them of their rights, right? Not take away 63% of their food stamps when that's all they have to live on. That's insane. 
Uh, sure, Webster, let me just stop you right there for just a moment and expand on this, uh, you know, here at the close. As a historian, as a researcher, as an economist, because you've certainly accurately predicted what would come, if the establishment has their way, where would the world be in 10 years? What do they want to do versus other ideas? What would, what do you expect to happen if this course isn't changed? In closing. I tell you, it's like um, Jimmy Stewart when he comes back to uh, Pottersville, right? Rottenville, after he decided, you know, let's see what it would look like if I had never lived. The United States will look something like this. There'll be no unions, no unemployment benefits, no Social Security, no Medicare, no Medicaid, no S-CHIP, no Head Start. Um, there'll be no child labor laws. College will be for the 1% as it was, say, in the 1920s. Most people will rent. They will not own because they will have been stripped of their homes. Um, Rich people will live in fortified, not even gated, but fortified communities. Most people will live in slums. Uh, social order will break down. And the Chinese will be looking down on us from the moon, from Chinese uh, permanent moon colonies and maybe even Mars colonies, where they'll be engaged in industrial production. And the United States will be essentially collapsing as a low-wage economy because, once again, we have an incompetent ruling class. The stupidity of David Rockefeller, the stupidity of Steve Forbes, the, just the, the cretinism of these people is so overwhelming that they can't understand that uh, the existence of the United States in some recognizable form of civilization, this is not automatic. This is now in danger. And the, the thing that's, that's bringing it down is the depression and then the response of the ruling class to the Depression, which is to say, cut it more. Let's act out our austerity psychosis and let's, you know, let's flay the people alive. Then we'll have money. We can pay for new rounds of bailouts. Well, yeah, uh, that's so the thing forth. is that they make money off corporate welfare and cronyism controlling the government. They know when they raise taxes on the general public, it cuts benefits. So it's just an instinct to dominate and ground us down seeing right. us as a political threat, but in truth, they're destroying the economy that empowered their system to begin with. Right, and, and remember, the, the, the one thing we know about oligarchy is oligarchs, going back to the time of the Trojan War, right, the, the, the official explanation for the Trojan War that we find in the Too fragments many of Hesiod. Too many people. Got to have a big war to kill people. And then in the writings of the old oligarch and, you know, four or five hundred uh, uh, BC there in, in Athens, the old oligarch says he doesn't like the Navy because the Navy is high tech and the Navy allows upward social mobility for the masses. And he doesn't like that because oligarchs want a frozen social order. That's the other thing. In that future picture, the social mobility will be zero. In other words, if you're born in the bottom 20 percent, your chances of going to the top 40 or the top 20 will be zero. Because you can forget it. Because there'll be no college for you. There'll be no Pell Yeah, grants. so basically they're a bunch of dark age stagnant worshipers. Right. All right, and, final question. And, we talk and idea their ideology. I mean, it's the Austrian school, the Chicago school, monetarism, neoliberalism. I mean, they have an economic theory, and it's it's wrong. And it's, it's genocide. All right, Webster, we've gone for well over an hour and 10 minutes. In closing, before we went on air tonight, during the first little break there from the news, you, you know, brought up the fact that uh, you had been at this New World Fair and you mentioned Zeitgeist. And I said, what is your view of Zeitgeist? Because I get calls all the time saying Zeitgeist, Zeitgeist has been seen 50 million times or so. He put me in the first film, put you in the first film. They talk about a yeah. master planning computer. We live in these plastic cities. The head of it told me, he said, if I didn't agree with what they wanted, I would be put in re-education. <laughs> so, so maybe I do need re-education, but um, what's your view on that? I've always been skeptical. Um, I was puzzled. They put me into their first uh, film. That must have been about, what, 2007, five years ago now. And the goal of that first film was um, they said they wanted 9-11 truth, but then it turned out that they had, they had a double goal. They said, 
We want 9-11 truth and atheism. And half of that first film is all about atheism, which I find to be a stupid, counterproductive, just wrong approach. It's also, you know, it's, it's offensive, right? What the hell does this have to do with anything? And that, that was typical of a lot of people who, who um, tried to mix in their own pet shtick in, into 9-11 truth. Um, I, I, I'm, I haven't really followed them very much since then because I've, I've had a relatively dark view, but I believe they also promote uh, peak oil, if I'm not Oh, mistaken. yeah, they do, and Z-Day is uh, going to save us. We're all going to throw our money in the water, and then yeah. we're all going to live in the plastic city where a computer programmed by Goldman Sachs, but they don't mention that, will uh, tell us what we get. Sounds as close as to hell as we can get. Yeah, I, I think any as soon as they say peak oil, you can forget it, right? I mean, anybody who promotes peak oil is just, it's so dumb, and it's so obviously inspired by the ruling class, right? It's its this group of, again, Darwinians. They're saying, quite, get right? ready for austerity, get right. ready for Malthusianism, right. you're poor because that's the, it, it's sexy, like the Whole Foods magazines say. It's like, they're, um, it, it's like a, a cheering you know, groupies, cheerleaders for ruling class austerity to say you you shouldn't want to have a you know a car or you shouldn't. Well, want it's to like have saying the position. Athenian Navy is too high tech. Yeah, so uh, I, I think the, the Malthusian inspiration for this is obviously a very bad thing. Um, anybody who, who professes peak oil is just the crackpot. You can forget them on just about every other issue in in many cases anyway. So I would uh, I would stay away. The one thing I did notice at this New World Fair event, there were all kinds of people from Zeitgeist trying to organize people, right? They were like missionaries all over this uh, gathering. It was not a big gathering. People can take a look at my uh, website, tarpley.net. I gave a speech which talked about some of these organizing perspectives. In other words, how we got to get ready. But to I thought Z Day was going to, here's the deal. I invited Peter Joseph as stage name or whatever on like a year ago. I said, look, we fought five, six years ago. I want to have you back on. And he said, fine, but you must renounce that I ever said you were going to go to a re-education camp or, or that I would be re-educated. And, and he sent me the video. And I went and looked at him. Like, I, he says on the video that. But I was like, he was like, no, I didn't. You must renounce it. And I was like, well, fine. You're all powerful, you know, and everything. I, I, I will not renounce it. I will not. I'm a heretic. But uh, he did say that. And... I just saw with the communist and people, it was always spaceships and technology and what they do. And, you know, always these kind of promises of heaven, Valhalla. And, uh, I mean, it's a waning thing anyways. It's just that, I, you know, I see comments that if you talk about it, the acolytes get very, very angry uh, that you're not following. I mean, I, look, it sounds like hell to live in some big plastic dome city where a computer decides what you get and what you do. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of into free will. I, I know that's bad, but... No, absolutely, free will. Um, free will is the is the starting point for any uh, reasonable uh, explanation. Um, I would just say maybe this this movement is not not important enough to be to be concerned about. The one thing we can say though is, as the depression gets worse, you're going to have does, more and more groups you're have trying irrationalist, to go irrationalist movements of all sorts, and they will become a useful political commodity. For the bankers, right? Who can who can use them? And that's the that's the danger. You don't want to have crazy irrationalist, um, you know, crackpot mass movements. No, I hear you, Tarpley. I think that's like an hour and twenty minutes. Thank you so much for all Thank the you. time. I think people really got to Glad hear your to ideas. Do it. Glad th to do it. Thank you. It was great having you. It's getting dark there, and uh, there in Maryland, it's going to get dark here soon too. Thank you for joining us. We're in the twilight of empire, but we're still fighting. Oh, you know what? I, let's just go even further here. I'm going to give you, if you'll do it in the twilight, so it'll get dark while you're on air. Ten minutes, uninterrupted. Tell us about uh, Paul Ryan. Tell us about Kolob. Uh, I mean, tell us. Tell us what you were telling me before we went live on air. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm being mean to Zeitgeist. I might as well be, be mean to children of Kolob right now. All right. 